Hello everybody and welcome back to Quipscope. It's the show where we talk about a game that we've been playing that has just come out or is coming out. My name is Ben. And my name is Ashton. Ashton, very exciting. Mm -hmm. You've been playing a game way ahead of release. Yeah. It's Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. It is, yeah. They sent us the code last week. Now I haven't, just a disclaimer, I mm. haven't played the whole game mm -hmm. because- This isn't a full review either. No, it's because I- Your impressions. Didn't want to play the whole game on my own. And yeah. with the code I got, I would have had to play the whole thing on my own. So I've only played about the first three hours mm -hmm. twice. So- Twice? Yes. So Are I played six hours, why? but twice. Uh, I will explain why, yeah. Okay. So the first time I played it, um, I was recording some of the footage for, for this show. Mm. And what I did instead was not check my hotkeys on my uh, OBS. And as soon as I threw my first grenade, the hotkey switched my OBS to be on face cam. So there's 45 minutes of me staring at the screen <laughs> and no gameplay. Without so, realizing that your camera's on. Yes, Excellent, exactly. that's good. So, and we do have that footage, yes? We're not gonna show it now, we don't, but we do, yeah, we do, we do have, have it. it somewhere. I'm yeah. really excited to see it. <laughs> okay. It sounds hilarious. <laughs> I'll uh, make sure I just put that on Twitter or something after cool. the Quipscope's gone out. I'd like that. We're both yes. big Borderlands fans. We are. Uh, this is the sort of spin-off, isn't it, mm. to, to Borderlands. Uh, um, styled after Dun Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. Kind Bunkers, of like, Bunkers and Badasses. Exactly. Kind of like the yeah. Assault on Dragon Keep DLC. Yeah, it's kind of like they've taken that and they've made it into a full game. Mm -hmm. um, but they have kind of... It's not just Borderlands, but, you know, fantasy like the DLC was. Um, though maybe it is a bit. Um, they have added kind of a lot of new elements in that mm -hmm. we haven't seen in Borderlands before. Okay. Um I'll just get straight into it. Yeah, yeah, tell um, me about it. What's new? So the first thing that's new is character creation. So rather than having just kind of four or six with DLC characters, kind of pickable characters at the beginning of the game that all have their own classes, you can kind of completely create the character that you want to play as, um, even though you really never get to see them because it's a first-person shooter. But, you but know. your friends can. Your friends can. Um, so you can create kind of exactly how they look and choose their pronouns. Is it um, quite in-depth? Sorry to cut you off, the pronouns thing is great. Yeah. But is, is it like quite, because obviously in Borderlands you could just sort of change the colour yeah, scheme and their actually, head, it right? It is quite in-depth, yeah. So in Borderlands 3 you could change, uh, well you could change their head and their, their colour scheme in most of them, but Borderlands 3 had it a little bit more okay. kind of uh, interesting. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can p pretty much pick the, what size and shape they're eyes, ears, and nose are. Oh, okay. You can change their hair color, their skin color, their hair cut, their ears, like everything. There's a lot. Okay. There is a lot. There's, you know, sliders, but not as many sliders as some kind of other ones. Yeah. Um, not quite Elden Ring style, but mm. there's still quite a lot um, to choose from. Or you can pick kind of um, pre, like... Yeah, some preset ones. Preset ones, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you can make your character complete from scratch. You can give them their own name. My character was called Diane. Um, and after uh, the people's princess yes of course um, and you can give them like a backstory so you can pick one of four kind of backstories one's like a serial hoarder one's raised by monks okay um, there's a two others but I, I can't remember what those ones are because I didn't pick them that give you certain additional points to, to your skills so like Dungeons and Dragons you've got like dexterity strength intelligence wisdom constitution all that kind of thing mm. but in this game they just kind of correspond to various stats so like constitution is your health and dexterity is your critical hit chance so the more points you have in them the more kind of increasing that is so they'll initially put those uh, points into the for like ones that correspond to the backstory you've picked but then you can also add like i think 10 points before you start the game so you can divvy those out accordingly so if you want right. to be really tanky you could obviously put those points into uh, like health and strength mm -hmm. but if you want to be kind of more magic-y you can put them into like spell regen and that kind of thing yeah um there's also as with everything six classes in okay. the game so whereas normally you'd pick your class based on the character mm -hmm. you can make the character and have whatever class you want okay um so there's there's six classes i played one version of the game as the Clawbringer, 
and one version of the game as the Spore Master, I want to say. Mm-hmm. So the Spore Master has um, a little mushroom friend. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. But the little, he's got a cute little bum. So it's a bit, it's a cute little bum. Yeah, like it's, got quite, that bunda. it's quite a, <laughs> quite it's a quite pronounced, pronounced bunda. Yeah. Okay, big thick boy. Yeah. Is that um, a bit like the Beastmaster sort of from? Kind of, yeah. So, so how it works is there's, every class has two action skills. One that you unlock pretty much early on, like right at the very beginning, and one that you unlock at level seven. Mm-hmm. And then you have a kind of a character feat, which is kind of like a passive skill. So that can be anything from like, there's a, like a necromancer type class that um, I think just in general kind of can take people's health when they kill them as a passive skill. Okay. Clawbringer, has, their passive skill is a wyvern that you can send out to attack people. Oh, wow. And then the spore master has the mushroom that's your passive skill that you can send out to attack people. Okay. Um, and they're kind of always around. You don't have to summon them, but if they if those two examples die, then they'll have to kind of take a little bit of a cool down before they come back. Right. But they are pretty much always out. And then you also have action skills. So you have two action skills. The Clawbringer's one is like a hammer one. So either like a big hammer smash that you can put like um, elemental damage on or a hammer throw that you can call back. And like, um, I think once you call it back, it makes the action skill cool down a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there is options of how you play it based on what class you pick. So you can, you know, choose what action skill you go down as you get further in the game um but yeah they are they're a bit more they're a bit different how borderlands normally works you know you don't have this kind of passive skill and then other skills normally it's kind of all at the same time um but there's also another kind of very similar but different so like shields are called wards but they are still shields Mm -hmm. instead of grenades you have spells and they do various things like cause like a meteor strike to come down from the sky or directly on someone or you can send out like an ice blast of spells or um one's like a little snake and if your snake kills someone it might have another snake come out of the okay. ground. Um, so spells, are, are, they're, they're grenades. They're grenades. Wards are shields. Wards and are they're shields. still dropped in the same way as they're loot from before? They're still dropped exactly the same, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, so this, the grenades, instead of having like a certain amount of them, they just have a regen time. Some um, okay. Some abilities mean that you can have extra spell slots. So you can do two spells instead of just the one and have to wait for it to kind of like replenish. Mm-hmm. Um Melee attacks are more refined. So there's more of a kind of a encouragement to use your melee attack more. So rather than it just being like punch or whatever in the other games, you can pick up swords and axes and stuff as you go through, which make your melee attack do more damage. Um, still the same way, you can still press the uh, the stick down or whatever control you have on the PC to use it, but it's just a bit more refined and you can tailor it a bit more. Um, and then last thing, there's, there's other things that I haven't unlocked yet, which I assume will kind of add various stats and stuff. But you can pick up armor, and armor adds skill points or class kind of modification. It's basically a class mod from okay. the other game where it's like, this is the Clawbringer uh, armor. If you wear this, it boosts your Clawbringer ability and also adds traits to this certain skill if you have it unlocked. So again, a bit like class mods in the other game. So it's not too dissimilar to like borderlands in a lot of ways if you haven't played borderlands you know it's you're not gonna like not know what's going on Mm. but if you have played borderlands it's not like miles and miles away from how the other games play um but yeah also guns have alternative modes i can't remember if it was like that in borderlands 3 i think some had all some of them did yeah some of them so a couple of them have alt fire, so like burst mode or semi automatic or stuff. But for the most part, it's just they're still they're guns. Just, they're they're, they're still guns, guns yeah. yeah. And okay. you know they're shotguns and stuff. So instead of reloading a shotgun, she sprinkles some magic dust into the top of it okay. to make it. Okay, that's fun. Go. Yeah. So there's just there's various right. kind of ways of making Borderlands a little bit more fantasy. Sure. Um. So yeah, that's kind of the like initial kind of gameplay elements of it. Um, in terms of the story, though... Yeah, where are we? What's going so, on? So, I think it's set between Borderlands 2 and 3. Right, so the same sort of time as uh, Salt and Dragon Peak DLC. Keep, yeah. Maybe after that. I think but probably Keep, maybe sorry, after that, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Um, but you kind of... So, there's two characters that we have seen in trailers. You've got Valentine and Fret, which are Andy Samberg plays Valentine and mm-hmm. Wanda Sykes plays Fret, who's the robot. Um they are they've landed crash landed into tiny tina's mountain so you know how in the second game she was in like a mountain um and she had a little 
like house underneath yes. it. Yes. Yeah. I think that they mention it very briefly, but I think that that's where they ended up. So okay. they've kind of crash landed in time. He was like, "Hey, want to play this game? Let's be friends." Right. Um, Valentine and Fred are not in the game with you. They simply talk to you from outside of the game. Okay. Um, you never really, you don't interact with them at all, really. They just kind of talk to you and give various voice lines with Tina and that kind of thing. So they'll be like, oh, that that's an ugly that's an ugly guy, isn't it? And then the <laughs> other guy's like, oh, yeah, I think he's, I, I'm so excited about this. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm just going to carry on with the story now. Thanks, right. Andy Sandberg. So in a lot of instances when games do make a big deal about bringing in you know, I, I'm hesitant to say actual actors, but yeah. you know, non non video famous game voice, actors, yeah, yeah famous, famous voices actors. and faces, yeah. although not the faces in this regard, no. obviously. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit underwhelming yeah. in that they just sort of doing not the bare minimum, but they're just kind of there. They're not quite as involved as you would expect, say, yeah. an Aloy to be, or yeah. someone who would play a character in, you know, in a regular vo- video game voice actor to to play. They're yeah. sort of far more limited in their yeah. in their appearance. Is that the case? Here? Yeah, so you remember in uh, Assault and Dragon Keep where you'd get kind of like input from like Lilith and Mordecai and Brick as you were going through, like right. they'd kind of like make comments and stuff. That's kind of what they're doing in this situation, but they are okay. just new characters that you kind of have no relationship with. Like if you have, in, in the other game, you're kind of like, oh, you're hearing the story, but also you kind of know the characters, whereas at this point they're just kind of like, talking at you and you're just like involved in it um one thing i will say about that though it feels very like a single player game in the sense of how like the beginning cutscene and some of the initial stuff kind of feels like there's no room for three other players if that makes sense you know how in like all the in the other games the four playable characters all arrive at the same time on the bus. You meet them all at the same time and yeah. you're like, oh, look, They're here's... all referred to as plural. Yeah, the exactly. Vault hunters. The vault, hun- vault Hunters. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if it's because it was a review copy, but I don't see it being different if it wasn't because mm. they did say, oh, we're only going to send you one code, but you can uh, play with other reviewers if you want. Um, mm. I didn't. I was too scared. Um, <laughs> um, but like you begin the cutscene, and there's, uh, there's Valentine and Frat in this situation and also this other character that is your character Mm -hmm. and they refer to you as the newbie you're the fate hunter a fate hunter like constantly like it's not you know you refer to as vault hunter or vault hunters but it's kind of gives you a lot more idea of like from the get-go there's four characters that have entered the situation in borderlands whereas in this game it felt like it's just you just you and tina's and then there's a cutscene where you're all sat around a table and it's She's just talking to you. There's no like room for anyone else to kind of be there. Interesting. Um, so I don't know if I just maybe was picking it apart a little bit, but I just think that I didn't feel that initial thing of being like, yeah, I play with my friends. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, we're okay. playing a game. Well, I suppose it would be weird. I mean, they, the, the inclusion of other players has always been a bit, I feel a bit lackluster in Borderlands mm. because then they never refer, they very rarely refer to you by name. Yeah. Uh, you don't all appear in cutscenes and yeah, stuff. especially uh, in Borderlands 3. So it could well be that this is how it's going to be, but it could also be that maybe it knows you're playing on your own mm. and it is just tailoring it to you, but I, I would be surprised if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the, the like meta version of it. But then the the story of the the campaign is that the Dragon Lord, who is voiced by Will Arnett, mm-hmm. um, is the bad guy. And is he good? He's he's good. Yeah, I mean he's kind of an, a weird uh, bad guy in that he keeps kind of asking you if he's doing a good enough job at being a bad guy. <laughs> okay. Um, like that's he's like fun, he's kind of encouraging you to like do well but also like being like you know i'm gonna yeah i'm I'm still a bad guy i'm still gonna ruin everyone's day but um but yeah he's like he's a good bad guy so far okay um i've only encountered him like twice um so far but yeah i think he's good and he's like the big bad of the game and he's just you know trying to destroy the world and you're trying to stop it so you know standard bad boy stuff standard bad boy stuff yes there's one other thing Mm. that i want to talk about that i am as yet unsure of my opinion of it Mm. so in the trailer and and if you're watching the gameplay we'll put some footage of it you see the overworld which is like the kind of board that you're playing on and you're like a little chibi chibi version of yourself with a big head as you run through this area and basically it's kind of like the the going from one area to the other instead of just going like now you're in this next area they go 
walk through the overworld and then head towards the gate of the next place and you know things will happen mm. the things that will happen are random encounters which I think they're kind of making a joke about Pokemon because you have to walk through tall grass someone might pop out and you have to have a random encounter these random encounters have thus far when I've encountered them been shoot enough people until the bar fills up and you've done it like there's no right. real other than like being a different location or a different kind of bad guy there's no real like diversity in it at all um i just shoot them until they die and then they go you did it here's some loot off you go congrats yeah. you can like so, so someone's coming at you to do an encounter you can just punch them in the overworld and it'll just like you won't have to do the encounter oh okay so you can say no but right. if you do it you might get some loot that kind of thing i see um okay. In the overworld, I I found one side quest. Now, I don't know if it's because, again, it's a review copy, so maybe they just didn't put all the side quests in it. And I also don't know if maybe, you know, there'll be more side quests in the main story. But I've completed now three story missions, and I found one side quest okay. in the overworld, and that was it. And that side quest asked me to go and retrieve a bit for a shrine, which mm. is just something that's in the overworld, and then come back. And in order to retrieve the thing from the shrine, I just had to kill lots of people until they, right. you know, killed enough of them to get the shrine piece. I mean, that is sort of the Borderlands MO, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I but kind perhaps of, it's it, it doesn't fit as well. Yeah, I just like. kind of feel like maybe even with Borderlands games, it kind of felt like you were shooting and, you know, you had to shoot your way through various situations. But there was kind of a bit more personality to them a lot of the time. Like, mm. if you were doing a mission where you had to retrieve something, it wasn't just going to be like, kill enough people and we'll give it to you. Yeah. It was kind of like, you know, you're trying to get to this certain thing and look around and do a little bit of exploration as well as kind of um, shooting people. Yeah. Um, I also found that the overworld's really glitchy. And these, like, I got some footage of it because it just started happening after I'd completed, like, um, the second area that it sends you to. Mm -hmm. I walked, was walking around and all of the, like, fast travel gates were, like, flickering black. And I was like, what's going on? What is that? And I realized oh. it was one of the fast travel gates that was flickering black. I joined in a random encounter and the whole, like, world was, like, flickering like crazy. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> like, I'm, oh, no. I'm, it's really making my eyes hurt. Um... But it only happened after I'd finished, like, the f initial kind of, like, story quest after you kind of get going out and out into the overworld. But I was like, this is this wasn't happening before, and mm. it is happening now, and I don't know why it's happening. So okay. hopefully, again, it's just a review thing, and by the time the game comes out, it'll be the fixed. Or but, yeah. yeah. But I just don't know how I feel about the overworld. I find it kind of bland, right. and it's not very big either. Like, when you look at the map, the overworld's quite small. So I'm kind of curious about how long this game is because like doesn't feel like there's a lot going on and I don't know if there's going to be a second overworld but it doesn't feel like there is like mm. it's kind of weird um in the way that it's laid out and I'm just not sure how I feel about it yet but maybe if you know you're as you go through it maybe there'll be op more areas opening up or there'll be a second overworld to go to but yeah, yeah that, I kind of I've enjoyed it I just think maybe I haven't encountered, I haven't started it in like the best way. I think maybe kicking it off straight with other people might have been better. But I just find that it's lacking quite a lot of the personality that Borderlands has, right. which is crazy considering that this is kind of one of those things where maybe it should have more personality. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I there's there's like the bad guys will say funny things as they die, as they do typically mm -hmm. in Borderlands, and you'll get kind of like people shouting things from a across like if you kill a skeleton they'll go please don't use my skull as a mug like as they die that <laughs> right, kind of thing okay. um and you do get that kind of borderlands humor but i haven't found too much of that in the actual like game itself so mm. far um there's a one thing that i've noticed yesterday where i was like oh this is nice one of the characters that you meet quite early on in the story is i like a non-binary slash like trans character kind of like very obviously kind of mm -hmm. They refer to him as a him, but kind of like he's very kind of ambiguous in the way that he is dressing and the way he looks in like the the little pop-ups at the top with the echo kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of a cool little nod to like just being a little bit more inclusive of characters and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying it and I'm excited to play more. I just am sceptical about how much I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. It's, if that makes sense. I wonder if... and. 
it's a, it, based on what you've said it's it sounds like it's it's taking a lot of swings mm. and maybe not all of them are connecting but also yeah. i've never been a big fan of playing borderlands by myself so no, i wonder if maybe yeah. a big aspect will be playing it with other people because you've played so. all the borderlands games with yeah with other people yeah as i well. have i've i don't think i've I've ever finished a Borderlands game on my own. So I do think like maybe that is also a little bit why I wasn't completely sold on it was mm. that I was playing it on my own. But I do just find that the beginning isn't doesn't capture you as much as like I think other games kind of tend to do. Right. Like I found myself kind of going, Oh, okay, I've finished this bit now. Oh, I'll just shoot these guys and then I'll, okay, I'll finish this bit now. I just I felt like it didn't have it didn't grab me in the first couple of hours on both times I've played it, mm -hmm. um, where I've kind of gone, yeah, I'm having an amazing time. I just kind of was like missing a little bit of sparkle that I kind of okay. thought was maybe going to be there because of Tina's kind of whole... She's a very um, like outgoing and personable yeah, she's kind eccentric, of character. Yeah. And I just kind of felt like it was missing a little bit of the kind of sparkle of, of what she brought to Dragon Keep. But That's a real shame. Yeah, but I'm hope I'm hopeful that it's going to get better. And I think maybe, you know, say playing with other people is probably the best way to play this game. Yeah. But, you know, I stand by how I felt about playing it. I just mm -hmm. maybe think that I need to give it a bit more time and a bit more energy and maybe it will grow on me a bit more. Sure. So, well, it's yeah. probably quite a big game. And yeah. And... It's coming out on the 25th of March, yes. so not too long to go. We'll be playing it at work. So, you know, we'll, we'll continue to talk about it and how we're finding it on the podcast and things like mm -hmm. that. So hopefully as it goes, you know, it captures you a little bit more. Yes, I'm hopeful. But uh, there we are. You got any, any last words before we quip it? I don't think so. You don't think no. so? No. Okay. I don't think so. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands? Yeah. More like Tiny Tina's Wonder... No. Okay. You got one? Yeah. Uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, more like Tiny Tina's Mushroom Bunderlands. That's good. Thank you. That's a really good one. Yeah. I think we can just call it there. Okay. Brilliant. But when I do a bad one, you make, you know, you still put it in. So I feel like you have to at least try because I, it's very rare that I do a good one. Okay. Well, I can only think of really negative things and I don't feel oh. like that's fair. Okay. Um, Tiny Tina's uh, Wonder. Wow, the the cool voice actors, huh? Aren't they? They're so rich. So and cool and so rich, rich and lands. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye. bye. bye.